Welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. Hi, everybody. You? Paula, you're there. I made it. You did. That is absolutely awesome. I reminded Fred all week, <clears throat> remember, don't let me forget this time. <laughs> <laughs> and? Pat is there, Dan, Greg, and Paula so far. I'm going to wait another minute and let everyone, before we get started. I'm now wise to Greg. He has the screen, that one picture in there that keeps him in the frozen position. Yeah, I feel a little bit like I'm cheating, but it's, it's more comfortable quite, this way. <laughs> it's quite all right. It's quite all right. Okay, I'm going to give it one minute and then we'll get started. Man. All right. Welcome to Shay's Spiritual Insights. As all of you know, um, I go by David or Jeff. I'm one of those people that went by my middle name and then it got confusing. So now I go by either my first or middle name. And welcome to our Friday Shay's Spiritual Insights in April. Before I start, there's some things that they wanted me to go over again. So they being my higher guidance and some of your guides. Um, the first thing, one of the philosophies I have, anyone that, that knows me, is that I believe we all have access to our, our own uh, answers to our own questions. It's just a matter of, you know, learning how to interpret the signals that we get. And then, of course, it's always nice to have someone as a sounding board that we can talk to. So with that in mind, I tend to ask questions because as we do, oftentimes the person will, will say something and it'll be the very thing that their guides are saying. But, you know, we tend to sometimes doubt ourselves and we think, well, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. So that's one of the things that they always have me do. Um, because the more we learn to do that ourselves, the less we have to depend on others and we start learning how to interpret our own internal signals that come in from our guides. One of the things that the last post I did here a few days ago, uh, they wanted me to write um, an extended post about the incoming energies. Our soul group, which is, you could say the earth, but let's just use, you know, um, the United States, North America. Um, our soul group has a lot of energies coming in. This has been talked about since, oh my goodness, Edgar Casey talked about it. Um, one of my mentors, June, and for those who knew Dr. McKimmy and the old man, he talked about these times. They're somewhat tumultuous. This is the time when we're to let the old patterns are to fall away in society and the, the new energies are to come in. Some call them that, you know, the earth is getting its energies and it's raising its frequency up. Um, connecting with the higher essence of Gaia. We have as our soul group, we're moving in to let go of the old patterns and move into the, it used to be called the new age, although that term has become a little bit dated. So, but anyway, and being part of the soul group, because soul groups just like us have a soul group, you could say life plan. It has, it's the general pattern of the soul group and the all the various choices that can be made and that are available to the soul group are there at collectively. We individually, of course, have life plans and we have the energies associated with it and the choices. And as we make our choices, we can you know, do anything from a little to a lot. We can do, learn our lesson this way or that way. I used to use the little phrase, there's 500 routes to Phoenix because you know, how we get there, we can do it, take the coast, we can go over the mountains, we can take the circuitous route, however we wish to go. It's up to us how we want to learn it. Um, and the idea, of course, is the ideal is that we learn to do it um, with, with less drama. And, and that's always the way to go. So well, but what's happening right now with this influx of energies, and it has really increased. In the past two years, it's really ramped up. It's just been on a steady 
incline. I mean, it has been coming in since noticeably to me since the 1980s, but it really has ramped up in the past few years in the last two. And then in the last two months, we've had a really ramp up even more, or if it looks better going this way for you, even more. And what that does is the energies rise up. It's like that hot air balloon for those who read the post and I've talked about it before. Uh, they, the guides keep routinely showing me this, my guides in the divine, where we're going up. Where these frequencies are causing us to go up and go higher and higher and raise our frequencies. To do that, we have to let off the ballast that hangs on the balloons. And that ballast is our energetic uh, attachments, emotional baggage, past life baggage, however you think of it. So what happens is as energies are coming in, it's forcing the, these things to either fall away if we let go of them, or if we hold on to part of it, some of it falls away, and then a lot of it ends up um, getting processed through our energetic field. And what that means to us is that we start feeling the energies associated with whatever that event was, whether it's in this life or a previous life. So all of a sudden we can feel angry, sad, um, you know, sorrowful, whatever, a lot of things. There, there can be a lot of different emotions that are coming up that are associated with it. And what's important for us to remember is that that is just what, those are events of the past. Just let it, don't hold on to it. Just acknowledge it and let it pass. Just let it flow. The energies will naturally clear it. Um, when you're feeling these kinds of things, it really indicates, although it's annoying to us at the human level, it's an indicator that uh, what it we're feeling coming out is actually healing. It's being released and it's a good thing. So it may not seem like it sometimes, but it is. Um, for a lot of you, in fact, I think everyone on this call so far, one of the themes of your life is that, welcome, Christine. One of the things that a lot of you are doing, and each in your own way, is you've come now to finish up. You, there's been this entire, what, what do you want to call it, a, a, a chap, chapters of our life or a phase of our lifetimes that we've been in. And it's it had similar lessons and similar things you've been doing. And for a lot of you, it's time you're wrapping this up. And so a lot of what's happening to you in this life, this acceleration and all these things that are happening, and sometimes it just feels like we're being bombarded. What's happening is, is that this is part of your life plan. And the fact that it's happening means that you're flowing with it. And just knowing that is helpful because the whole idea is for us, these things to happen, for us to acknowledge them, let our higher guidance take us through it and let it go. And so we're wrapping it up, whatever that means to each of us so that we can move on to this next phase. And that's the new, a lot of people call it the new, um, the, the new earth, the new dimension. What, what, what I see with everyone um, whether that's an actual physical move and people shift there and, 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 or whether that's just energetic, it's definitely energetic. I see people's energies, old connections being cleared, new connections being made, and they're slowly shifting uh, upward. And I say slowly, it actually is kind of rapid, but it can only go as fast as our being as a whole can handle it. Um, because if it happens too fast, uh, we can get out of balance and it can cause us some psychological and emotional difficulties, to say the least. So it, the, the, our higher guidance in the universe knows the speed at which we can take it and that we are willing to go and it, that happens. And it comes usually in waves. You know, we'll go for a while, they'll give us a little break and then it'll come again. So um, they want me to mention that because for a lot of you, and we've talked, there's a lot happening and that's why it's happening because one of the overarching themes of all of your lives, everybody on the screen here, is that you are, um, again, wrapping up this phase you've been in for however long, however, you know, a thousand years, 2000 years, whatever it is, that phase is done. You've learned the lessons. It's time to finish them up so you can move to the next phase. And whether that means you will have another life here on earth or won't, for some of you, there's choices. For some of you, you have a lifetime where you're gonna come back illuminated and help other people but we can talk about that another time. Um, and again, Dr. McKinney, and he talked about the old man, for those who know him, uh, talked about these times we're in, and he spoke of them in very uncanny accuracy. And 
So what's happening now is no surprise. What's important for all of us is for us to stay centered or connected in our higher guidance, to be involved in worldly activities to the degree we are, but we're not to take on or get involved with the energies of others. You know, that's one of those Buddhist teachings, don't take on someone else's karma. Uh, we have free will, we can do that, but that isn't what we're to do. We're just to stay connected, flow with what, what we know, uh, help others, be the light, be the channel of the light, and that's how we make a difference is by raising the frequency of the world. So with that, I think I don't have anything else to say. Does anyone have a question? Go ahead and I can start with Pat. Do you have a question? Uh, actually, unless there's more to add, you pretty much answered what my question was, which was, what is the most important thing as a group we can be focusing on that will help us individually and collectively mm -hmm. as we traverse the time, these timelines in the universe and the cosmos in the fast energy paced times. So talk about, you know, maybe later you'll have something more to add. Um, you probably sure. don't right now. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And you, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm seeing it with everyone. I, um, when we talk, when I talk with anyone, typically the divine someone I'm shown um, the very thing that we're talking about. And so much is happening with everyone right now. It's so accelerated. It, this is unprecedented times. And oh, the one thing I was going to mention, and, and, and thank you, Pat, you, you jarred me to think of it, is that we are truly, and I think of it as a spiritual renaissance. I really do. These are times that haven't been for so, so long. The frequencies are rising. Back in the 1980s, as I mentioned in the post, I went to a, a, a seminar, one of the Illuminated Mind seminars, and um, it was the Theta class then. And, and I got in Theta for probably 30 seconds to a minute for one period, and then I floated back to a deep alpha. And that took us, that was on the third day. Now we have people routinely in our monthly meditations and other meditations going into theta right off the bat. And that's because of the accelerated energies that we're in, allow for, for what June used to call spiritual quickening, which I have now borrowed the term. I love that term, spiritual quickening, because that's indeed what's happening. We're multifolds faster than we used to be. This is a lifetime where we can really get, we can do five lifetimes worth of learning and growth in this lifetime if we choose because of the accelerated environment. It's such a gift. It's, but with, with any gift, there's the other side of the coin, which is with accelerated energies coming in, it means other things as the, the things that we are releasing are also being accelerated. And occasionally it means it gets processed again through our energetic field and we, we get to experience it. But again, all we have to do is just acknowledge it, bless it, stay in the light and know that it'll pass. And the universe will take care of us. So thank you, Fat Pat, for, um, for reminding me of that. I am trying to get the camera now to where the glare is less. I may have to adjust it. I have a new camera holder. So if it's not good enough this time, I'll raise it up further so that the glare doesn't show up on my glasses as much. All right. Um, who else would like to go? Dan, Greg, Paula, Christine? I can start with Dan. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Hello, hello there. And Kathy's oh, here too. Kathy's there behind there. All right. So, what is your question, Dan? Any, anything to share? Well, it's it's kind of a uh, an observation, and you may or may have like Pat's question. You may have already answered this uh, in what you had just described. Um, mm -hmm. But what we've been noticing. And I don't want to pick on Gemini's, but I don't know how <laughs> else to explain it <laughs> other than um, other than a mild Jekyll and Hyde. Um, we've just been noticing a bunch of people are um, they're out of balance Gemini's or something, but and they're not even Gemini's. Um, <laughs> Two people in one, and they're like the Jekyll and Hyde thing. Yeah, for sure. Can, can you get have her get closer to the microphone? It's kind of blurry. Oh. I just said um, two people in one, the real Jekyll and Hyde kind of a thing. But Dan, yeah, 
And I can talk to that in a second. Go ahead and continue. Um, well, just because some of the things we've noticed is, um, uh, you know how you were able, uh, people were able to hide at least one aspect of themselves. Um, and, you know, they, you know, like they were a Ford person. And then, you know, they, they didn't like Chevys at all. Mm -hmm. and, but now it's like, um, the people are like, well, Fords are great, but, you know, Chevys aren't so bad. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you're able to see both sides of the person. Um, uh, whereas, you know, it used to be one, uh, you know, specific thing that you could remember somebody by. Mm -hmm. But now there's like two different aspects of the people showing up. Well, so. and part of that too um, is like in one minute their behavior is like really nice and helpful. And then, then in the next minute, they're like really like ornery. It's been bizarre. And so first they want me to ask you, why do you think that is? I can answer that, but I, I think you know already. Uh, well, <laughs> like you with the incoming energies it's it's hard to um it's stay it. focused on one thing they want to be they want to be a certain way but they don't know how or they don't see the path uh, they're not on the path like, like they're stumbling on the path <laughs> really yeah. overwhelmed yeah. they're overwhelmed yeah. that is a good word they're over um th there's a word you know energetically overwrought and, and they're just, they're, they're energized to the point where all the circuitry of their being that feeds into their energetic bodies and their mental body and emotional bodies are firing. It's like too many, you know, neurons firing at once, so to speak. And, and they're not able to maintain it. Um, and so the little se separators, the little veils between the different aspects and the different parts of their personality sometimes get drop away or get blurred into one another and you're seeing it and it has to do with you're absolutely right it has to do with the accelerated energies and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon <laughs> um the one thing i can say to it that i've noticed that i, I wasn't sure if they're going to have me mention it and now they're telling me to mention it um and kathy and i and dan have talked about this part of the soul group energy which is also because each of us is part of the soul group we're getting the same energies that are propelling us on our individual path that dovetails into the collective path, if you will, of our soul group. Just I'll leave it at that for right now. But what's happened is, is there's been a, a real spurt of energy in the collective um, energies of those uh, in authority that um, they've tried to make a move and that energy is there. Now you're seeing you know, like it's, it's called a lagging indicator, like in economics, you have leading and lagging indicators. Um, you know, for example, the, when the price of gas goes up or down, it's, it's a lagging indicator of the price of oil two months previously. You know, it took a while to filter through the system. And so what is happening now is what we're seeing is a lagging indicator of that. And it looks like it's, um, it, it has tapered for a little bit. I don't know if there's more coming, um, but there's, things happening and we're to be aware of them and again to stay centered in the light to be the light that will melt that melts away the darkness and so anyway i don't know why they wanted me to mention that again but um we're not to be um in our low self we're to remain again centered in our in our connection with our high self to be centered in the light connected and that light will change things so but anyway, that is what your observation, Dan, is exactly what, um, and Kathy, that, that is indeed what's happening. You call them Geminis. By the way, you already know this. I'm a Gemini. And that, yeah. is one of the, that is one of the things that Geminis have this dual aspect of themselves. And we come in as Geminis so that we can learn that balance thing. Um, yeah. yeah. But anyway, do you have anything else to ask or to, to share? Um, Just how overwhelming it's been. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the whole week of Easter was incredibly high tumultuous energy. I don't know yes. if anybody else felt that, but yes. it seemed like it really ramped up. It did. Yeah. And I'm just feeling the effects even today. So. <laughs> yeah. And it's, that's why I said it's going to be what we're going to start still feeling. You're going to start 
feeling some of it that happened before your words, all of a sudden it's there and you're feeling it. Yes. And right now it seems to be stable, but we'll, who knows? And I think I'm a firm believer that if we, just as they've done psychological tests where people who, if they have some annoyance happening in the room, some, you know, loud buzzing sound, it, you know, if they have a button there that will shut the sound off, they always feel better. And I feel the same thing is true in our spiritual life, that if we know what's happening, it's like having that button. We can now know, hey, okay, I know what's going on. You know, everything's okay. We just have to flow with this. And I think it's a good thing to be forewarned about it or to be knowledgeable about it. So thank you. Anything else? Um, no, I mean, uh, should I do the thing about Bonsoir? Oh, I don't care. Uh, okay, just, just one more thing really quick. Mm -hmm. Dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not a joke, but I couldn't put my finger on how I was feeling this week. And uh, I, I saw a thing in the paper where there was some postpartum uh, helpers. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, that's what I'm feeling is this postpartum depression because I birthed this world and it doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, on the surface, but, but I don't know. I, I was just feeling this, um, that kind of a depression thing, or I don't know if it was depression. I don't know. I still can't despondency. I can't put my finger on what I was feeling. <laughs> well, part of that is, um, and, and you've got another wave coming, uh, stuff that you have processed through and what you're doing right now, part of what you're feeling, what you're calling the postpartum. And this happens a lot of times. Well, once we've let go of stuff and a lot of times it falls away, all these different, I see them like these, all these threads of our being, you know, that from the different bodies have to reground and rebalance. And as they do that, they can feel the loss of the, even though it was not something as, you know, you can call it, it could have been a, some negative attachment yet we had lived with it all that time. And now that it's fallen away, it's for the low self, it's like a loss. It's like a, it's feeling, it's feeling a loss. And I'll say it's rebalancing and then and it reintegrates. And then the universe tries to give us time before the next thing comes along. And I want you to know, and your high self wants you to know, um, you have some more coming and <laughs> it has to happen for part of your life path. This is what many things that have happened in your life. And I'm going to leave it at that just in this shared setting, but um, it's, it's a, they were precursors and they were setting for, uh, things, the groundwork in the stage so that you could get process this stuff out of your life and let it go. The, the remainder that's coming up. So, um, and that is what is really necessary for you to do many of the things that you have left to do in this life. And then thereafter in between lives and then on future, whatever it is you choose to do, whether you come to earth again or go to whatever you do, um, that's a key part of it. And it's so important that you know that and flow with it because, you know, as we, as you know, when we're going in the middle of it in the intensity, it sometimes, um, what is it when we're, you know, it's hard to remember that we were trying to drain the swamp or we're being surrounded by, you know, snapping alligators and things. So, and <laughs> so anyway, just know that that is part of why it's, it's coming up and it's just to be for you to be aware of it. It's nothing to be, um, to be concerned or fearful of or anything. It's just to know that it's coming. And I don't, I don't think you are fearful of it, but just know it's, you know, um, they want you to know it's coming up. Awesome. I'm glad I asked that because you answered a lot of things on that one. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank oh, you, Jeff. I'm sorry. Can you repeat? I just said, thank you, Jeff. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. Hey asking. Jeff, this is Pat again. And before we go on, because people may have other have other questions, but as empaths, and and with what we just discussed in the whole of Dan and Kathy's, um, is is there are there a tool or tools how we can handle this collective energy besides just flowing with it? You know, can you give us an actual tool? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank one you. of them is, um, and, and they pointed it out to me again. It's why it was, again, that's why these things ended up in the post is that grounding exercise we do. Because what happens is, is that as we go about our day, we start having, you know, we start 
sometimes, you know, you know, our low self and just some stuff comes in and we, and we don't stay as grounded as we could. And that grounding exercise does a couple things. Uh, it one it gets our grounding chakra, which is six to uh, 18 inches beneath our feet. When we set that little core, that shaft of light down into the middle of the earth, it connects us with earth. It re hones that ground and it allows things that are ready to fall away to fall away. And that clears the channel so that the energies don't build up and we don't have the, you know, we're all of a sudden we're just having the intensity and things are blocked and we don't, and just, we're feeling three different ways at once. It allows those things to fall away. And then of course, connecting with our higher guidance, that's just a simple one. Um, Deborah's chants out there. Uh, I don't ask me to pronounce them, but they're out there. There's some beautiful ones connecting with a golden cosmic being. Um, those are wonderful things, those chants and, and can bring us and get us re, just automatically allows us to, because sound does wonderful things and chants, allows us to just naturally tune to the higher essences of our being and allows things to align and clear. And of course, we have the monthly meditations out there. Meditating is probably one of the best things we can do, and I'm sure most of you do meditate regularly. I know that if I miss a day, I can tell. Um, I can really tell the difference because things build up. Even though I do the grounding, I find that meditating really allows, especially if we can go deep, allows us to connect with our inner essence and allows things to naturally realign and rebalance in ways that we're not even consciously aware of. So I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. And I'm anxious to hear the others now. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Greg, would you like to go? Sure. Um, another question or perhaps observation about uh, dreams. Mm -hmm. I, I've had a, several dreams with a person that I used to work with and haven't seen for 20 years and wasn't aware that I was even thinking about this person. And I had a dream with her in it this morning and it it suddenly occurred to me that this wasn't about me that this that there was a connection there somehow and i didn't feel like an accord it felt positive or at least neutral and i realized oh she is somehow working through something that she's experiencing and that has caused her to connect with me and i really felt like well perhaps we don't always generate our dreams like we tend to think we do, that we're connected in multitudinous ways. And sometimes it really might not be about us. <laughs> well, a couple things on that for you. And this is from your high self. Uh, you've been, it looks like you've been dreaming a lot more lately. I have, yeah. Okay, that's what he's saying. And this is your Right now, this is a phase you're in, and this is, seems to be the, the means or the method that your being is using to process energetic stuff that's ready to be done. In other words, and it's, it's doing multiple things. It's clearing old connections, it's, and which is allowing for the newer connections to actually be able to form. The older, some of the, in some cases, it's mutually exclusive. These have to go so for these other ones to really properly assign, get connected and then rebalance. And then... Um, all, you know, of course, anytime, just like events in our life, you know, one emotional event ties to other similar type events, just as we are all connected in humanity, all beings are net of Indra. We've talked about that where each of us is, you can say, an aspect of God. We're just, you know, where God split himself up or herself up or itself up, however one looks at it into multiple pieces so God could look at itself. This is a kind of a Hindu Buddhist, they have, they have little tales about this. But one of the things why I mention this is that in dreams, whenever you dream about someone, you are actually interacting with an aspect of their being. And I agree with you, this is for her benefit, but it's also for you. Uh, it's more for her than it is for you at this point in this that particular dream. Um, she needs to, um, resolve some things in her lo her life that are she she assigns or feels are connected to you and she's processing through them and you're also working your end of it as well within your being to um, bring that into a balance into its proper balance with her 
and so much more. You're doing all kinds of things, processing, learning, doing things. Um, and then, I guess I can share this. And the reason why you're doing it this way, because it seems to be working really well, and it's making way to clear a whole bunch of things out of your energetic beings, energetic field, so to speak, um, which are going to allow this next phase. It's kind of moving in, and it looks like, and this is so, this is so Greg of you. Um, <laughs> and I mean that in such a positive way because everyone is so, it, it's, although things happen to us and, you know, cause we all have similar events, but it happens uniquely with each of us. And yours is like moving in like a fog. It's like this fog bank moving in. They're showing me this fog bank of the new coming in. So it's kind of gentle. And, and so it slowly comes in. It's not like a big wave that just suddenly slams you because at that point, then you're shocked and we put up defenses and stuff, but it comes in in such a way that you're ready for it. It's kind of like dip, tipping our toe in the water and saying, yeah, that's okay. And I'll tip it in a little bit more. And it allows you to get ready for these new energies coming in. And so that you greet them and embrace them at the same time as you're embracing these new ones, it's a letting you gently, sometimes unknown to your conscious mind, let the other things go and let this harmonic energetic rebalancing happen within your being. And this happens with everyone as we do things, but this is really happening with you and, and your dreams seem to be a big vehicle of that right now. Yeah, I, you're right about that. I seem to be going immediately into dreams and yes. they uh, are very vivid and colorful and have a lot. And the thing that's nice is like you say, there's no, um, there's no baggage there. There's no, it just feels fine. It's it is. Just, it's not just cordon. Right, right, right. No. So. It's, it, it, what it, it more is, it's, it's a better way of saying it. It's, you know, these energy threads and, 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 their, and their communications and the way we, we energetically process at the non-conscious level as we're going throughout our life. But as we raise in frequency, as, as we shift upwards in frequency, and I, I use the word spiritually evolve into our true being, Eventually, we, the new energetic connections get formed, and these old ones are still there, and they're ready to go. And sometimes they just, they naturally will fall away of their own accord, but sometimes, and most of you have heard me talk about it, it's similar to that stuffed closet thing, thing that, you know, there's so much stuffed in this closet, you can open the door and nothing falls out. The same thing with these, sometimes with these cords is that they get sufficiently tangled, and that's um, part of what it's going to be coming up in the meditation this month um, for us here um, is that those have to be untangled and cleared away. It's not like they're stuck. It's not like they're, we're holding on to them. They're just kind of there of their own volition. It's like inertia, things in motion, stay in motion, things that are not in motions to kind of stay where they are. It's kind of like that. And your dreams are definitely doing that for you. So it's not negative. It's just, it's time for them to be, to be, house cleaning, swept away, um, put into a cord with whomever and whatever it is that's happening. And so that you can move on. And that is indeed what is happening. You are uh, moving on gently in your own way that works for you. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. Anything else? Well, I'll, I do have something, but I'll, I'll try to make it sure. quick. Um, today we were the Elohim groups meeting for our, our gathering, our meditations. And mm -hmm. I'm accustomed to having meditations where I sort of, I, I know I'm tracking what's being said and I know I'm engaged and all this kind of stuff. And then I come out of it and I have no memory or not adequate memory of what was happening. Mm -hmm. But there's still sort of a level of consciousness or of what was happening. Today, I ended up going someplace I don't believe I've ever gone before where I actually had no conscious memory at all of what happened. It was just like someone cut the, and edited the film of my life and took out a huge section that was that meditation. And when I came back, it really felt like my spirit and body had to work to get reconnected. And afterwards, I noticed in subsequent meditations that my body was actually registering anxiety about my going into meditation again. <laughs> and I just was curious if you have any observations about that. I do actually. And I was being shown as you were speaking, what happens, you went deep, you went, you went very deep and you went very high up and you went into some other realms and I'll leave that alone. What happened is, is it's really important 
and I don't know if this is happening. I'm sensing it's not for some reason. It's not negative. It'll all, it'll, it'll eventually balance out. But what is you didn't get a chance for all your energetic connections to rebalance and hone and, and get fully connected in, in, um, in your extended being and, and your active connections to the other alternate aspects of your being are, are active as they are for a lot of people that we talk to, especially those that are on this, this uh, zoom session here call meeting. So when you, while you're having anxiety is that because you're, you're being, let's call it that the energetic connections you're being hadn't rebalanced. There's some anxiety about going out again, because some of the connections that that meditation, your inner self knows and your high self know are going to be used are not fully rebalanced again, reconnected and balanced and flowing. That's why. Okay. Yeah, I felt it was important to try to ground after that. Yes, I yes. I was yeah. just going to say that. Yes, do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Thanks. You're welcome. And also, what will help you, believe it or not, uh, take a shower. Oh. And ground, well, do the grounding exercise while you're in the shower. It's incredibly powerful. Water is such a powerful thing in so many levels and ways. Uh, your inner self and your being will know what to do. It will help you ground and re-get things settled. Um, much more than just grounding by itself. Okay, great, thanks. You're welcome. Paula, do you have anything? I do, thank you. And thank you, Greg, because you used a couple of words there that helped me put my sentence together for this question. Um, today, especially, I felt like my spirit and my body were disconnected. It, I stopped and I grounded twice, you know, that I command all my, and you go through that whole thing. And it was like, I was not connected at all. And that hasn't happened to me for quite a long time. And when Greg was talking about the dreams, I've noticed I've been dreaming more, but not remembering them as much as, as sometimes. But um, it just really threw me for a loop today, that total unconnection. And lately I've had no connection with time. Um, it's like I get up and then all of a sudden it's like, how can I be going to bed? I don't even remember what happened in between. Okay. Your high self wants me to ask you why you think that is. And I think you already know, but we can talk about it. And believe it or not, it's, it's, it's similar. It's the same thing, only different, as I sometimes say, uh, as Greg's. But go ahead. Why do you feel that this is happening? Okay. I'm tuning into myself and I, I was starting to hear something. Um, I'm, I'm hearing that it's because of a big step I'm taking in my spiritual life. Exactly. And I'm, I'm on the fence. Yes. That's a good way of putting it. I was going to say you're in between. You have this entire collection of things, energies, beliefs, ways of doing things. It's hard to even use words to describe them, but we can intuitively sense them. And they had to do with your old life. And I don't mean just this life. Again, remember I mentioned they, most of you, in fact, all of you on this call, are all of you are wrapping up in one way or the other in the way that it, it means to you, whatever that means to you, your being, a whole phase of lifetimes, of the learning and the ways you did things. You're now ready to do things at this new higher level. I say new because, well, it's, it's new for, we did it in Atlantis, but it's new for here and now for this time frame, for this era, spiritual era. And you have the old and you have the new and you're sailing up, going up, up, up and away and you're connecting and connecting and you haven't quite let go of it. And what your high self is saying is to flow with it, be patient, continue to meditate. And I think you're going to have some insights coming up here in the next week or two. In fact, there's some stuff coming through right now for you that's they want you to know that they don't want me to talk about. So it's coming through energetically. And that's true for all of you, by the way, it's been happening the whole time. Your guides do that um, and the divine, um, but you're going to have some help, but just be patient with it. It's coming time for that to happen, but there's some awarenesses and some additional preparatory things that need to happen so that when it does happen, um, things that you're ready to flow with it and it happens more naturally and more harmoniously. But it is a big shift, and like any shift, you know, it can be like a wave. All of a sudden, we're ready for the wave, but still, once the boat hits the wave, it's still a pretty big wave. So just know that that's, that's coming for you. Your inner self has been wanting this. There's things that you have been asking for, 
and they know about that. They, as I'm going to define, is the universe, the divine, which is the various aspects of God and your guides, and your nearing readiness for it. And so it's showing up in your dreams, it's showing up in your meditations, and it's definitely showing up in your sense of, you know, on the fence, disconnectedness. You've got this, I can see this. You're moving up and you've got these, that, that ballast that I talked about on the, in the balloon. You've got your ballast stuff yet, but it's not quite ready to be dropped off, but soon it will be. And when it is, it'll be a decision for you to do that because it has some outer implications in your life um, that go along with it. And these are things that the universe wants you to become aware of. It's not for me to tell you what those things are, but you will become aware of them and they're trying to do it and they are doing it and you are doing it in a way that keeps you flowing and as balanced um, as, you, as you can with the amount of stuff that's happening. And it's a lot. It's a lot with all of you, by the way, but it's a lot for you, Paula. All right. Thank you. That uh, energetically, that is um, the the heat is let's say exponentially hot right now. So <laughs> the energy is definitely flowing. I do have one other question. It's not so much group related. Sure. And it's a little bit more myself related in regards to privately. But um, you and I have spoke many times about my grandson, mm -hmm. and he's he's got something going right now. And and I'm wondering. I'm asking you. Is it time for me to step in and be of a spiritual help for him? Or is this something he needs to figure out on his own? You need to be there. Okay. I'm going to speak out of both sides of my mouth, which I'm, I can do really well. Um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, you need to be there for him in the way you have been in the light. You've been doing so much that you're sending light and love and, and you're doing a lot behind the scenes and you need to be there in that capacity. Um, I, I'm getting that. It depends on the de some decisions he makes from his outer and inner being, uh, how he's choosing to do some things that are coming up for him relatively soon, actually. Um, and, and if he chooses the one, you'll, you will be called to be more active. And I think you're going to know that. You'll, okay. it'll, be, it'll be relatively obvious to you. But part of this is up to him and his decisions. And just keep, keep doing what you're doing, setting the light in your heart love. That is really helping. Very, very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Paula. Christine, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Great. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Okay, good. Um, well, uh, a lot been happening as far as um, the dream state goes. I've been having dreams almost like in the waking state of like being. Mm -hmm. um, I been doing my best as far as like today like I don't to clear that out but there was I could see like as far as where this specific being in the dream that I had um like it was like watching me and I was watching it watch me mm -hmm. um, that's a good way of putting where it. it yeah it does like the whole time that I was you know like in that mm -hmm. state and where it came from I do believe that it partially cleared out that's a good way yes it's, there's some yes yeah and it, um some some ets came in as far as because it's just like where does it originate from right mm -hmm. like go back to where it originated from um so i'm i'm doing my best i could try you know do better or whatever um or not whatever but i could do better as far as like really taking some time and focusing um, to go ahead and clear this out because it, it comes into the new space that I'm going to be occupying. And I don't necessarily, um, I would not like that energetics to be in my space. Um, I feel like it can somewhat influence the people that I'm going to be living with. Is that correct? It'll have, yes. And we'll talk to this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I, I feel like it's not um, positive. Okay. One is that correct? The, it's not what? Is that correct as far as it's not like a very positive energetic? No, it's not. Okay. 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 First thing, you're, you're, uh, they want me to, they, I'm going to say your guides and your high self want me to talk about a few things for you to give you some context on this. Um, you've really you know, uh, have in this lifetime, 
as with many, but you have really chosen to take on a lot of stuff. You were really coming in wanting to just take out this whole room full of stuff that's accumulated over lifetimes and just get rid of it. But to do that, we have to, it has to be done in orderly way within our being so that things stay in balance. And we've all talked about that before. Mm -hmm. So your high self wants you, and, and, she, and she knows you're not prone to this right now, to be patient. You're, you're really ready okay. for it to go. You're concerned. They, so the first thing she says, she doesn't want you to be overly concerned about it. Okay. 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 She wants you to stay um, focused on, on the light and letting it clear, but there's a lot of um, entanglement with this one. And this meditation coming up um, this month is a good one for you. Okay. And she I'm wants you to, to, to remember, remember back that in the first intuitive mastery that when you took that, and we did the yes. ACCA chord. Now these are, isn't ACCA mm -hmm. chords per se, but these are, during the ACCA chord exercise, you had a lot of them there that you had cleared away. And what mm -hmm. you have a lot of stuff right now that is clearing, but it has to clear naturally. And, you know, to keep things in balance, this piece over here has to clear and then this and this thread over here. And there's some layers to it. Did you ever okay. read the post I had on uh, emotional baggage that talked about threading? Um, I don't recall it. Well, I'll make a long story short on that. When we have events that happen in our lives, and they usually are tied to other things, if it doesn't get resolved, whatever that, that type of, of event was, that uh, discordant event, that trauma, if it doesn't get resolved, another one like one, manifest either in the same life and then into next lives and it just different versions of the same thing happen. And they're energetically threaded through the layers. And what you're okay. doing right now, why it's why you're saying it's partially, what's happening is the layers with this are getting pulled away. And then the next layer comes up and it looks like, hey, it's still here. What's going on with this? It okay. actually, it's a different layer of the same thread. Oh, and okay. And it's tied to some other things that also, when it's tied to them, they have to clear out too before the next thing can come up. So they're guiding you to do this. She doesn't want you to be overly concerned. She wants, she being your high self and your guides want you to flow with it, keep the light on okay. it and just to be aware of it. Um, but she just wants you to remind you that, and it can happen, you know, when we, um, what we're to do is to say, focus on the light. As the stuff comes up, acknowledge it, mm -hmm. kind of like in vipassana, vipassana meditation. You acknowledge the thing that you're sensing coming up, but we don't engage it. And sometimes okay. when we're trying to get rid of stuff, we inadvertently engage it, and it becomes a negative cycle attachment, which has happened a little bit with you, but for the most part, it hasn't been. And that's why it's going, okay. it's flowing, you're doing it. It's probably going to end up being some of it as you move in, but the fact that you're okay. aware of it and being cleared, it will help. Um, okay. It, it will get resolved slowly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. As I say slowly, slower than you would like. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. You're welcome. Um, yeah. It's Another helped. thing that, yes. Uh, yes um, I think that, um, so, I was talking to, um, like, I'm recalling, like, things that have happened to me, like, physically, like, to where I'm, like, talking to Oberon and Caleb, and, and then all of a sudden, like, I ended up getting hurt, uh, my toe ended up getting hurt, and then um, the next morning, I, I remember that that happened, um, and I actually have physical, um, like, my toenail got cracked, and I, I, brought it up to Caleb and Oberon and they don't recall this situation. Was that a time, different timeline? Hmm. I'm seeing it. I'm trying to see what that is. Cause it like physically, like I, my big toe toenail was like hurt and they don't recall like that happening at all. And I remember something like getting, you know, like hit on my toe and yeah. me grabbing my toe and then they don't recall anything like that it happened okay i'm going to give you kind of an initial answer and it may, more may come through what i'm being shown this is an alternative is the alternate it could be a past event okay that um you it's actually being released it, it's you're having this interaction it's coming up 
and then it's manifesting in your body. And that can happen if stuff gets cleared. I mentioned that in this last post as well. And this is really okay. happening a lot more to people that never had it happen before that's happening now where something associated with, I'll use a past life event. Um, we got hurt really bad on our elbow and all of a sudden our elbow is just aching and it hurts. And, and there's, and I didn't do anything, but all of a sudden sometimes we can recall the event cause we're tying, we're remembering it's coming up into our memory. I think it's more along that line. You can call that an alternate timeline, but I think it has to do um, with, um, I can say, yeah, past life events, but pre other events that um, are tied to things that are in, active in your energy field now that are clearing and it's coming up. And okay. That's why it's happening. That's going to be okay, my initial answer. And I may have more for you later. Personally, I can, we can talk. Okay. Um, another thing is, um, I've, um, I've seen, uh, visions and I've tuned into, like, I've asked my source or whatever, and she's saying she's doing the number two, like, as far as, you know, like two, and I'm like, what, two years to this. And she like nods when it goes to two years, the yes and no that I like, I will no longer be in my physical body. Like I go into like a light. Hmm. I don't know that I see that, but I do okay. see, I do see you shifting, um, as if you, as you're continuing on. And of course we have free will. We can change, we can, we can choose to continue on the path and do that or choose sometimes to not do that, but you are moving higher into the higher, uh, octaves of your being shifting into your light connections, your light body connections. So yeah. I do see that, um, okay. not, necessarily at least they're not indicating to me that that you're you're leaving anytime soon okay but i do see okay. you and the current path you're going you're shifting more into your connections of your light body which is mm -hmm. wonderful yeah it is mm -hmm. awesome um yeah i mean like um uh the only other thing that i have to share is that i've noticed a even uh, that grounding uh, today, um, grounding was definitely important because of what I've been experiencing, just uh, the, the anger and just um, a lot of different emotions and things like that. And having other people go through um, the emotions and, and stuff like that. I'm glad it uh, has to do with shifts and changes and stuff like that. Um, part of it also that I'm aware of, it, it seems like there's a lot of beings that are tied into influencing specific people that I have in my life, like, um, my daughter and, um, even, uh, through Oberon and, and my partner and myself too. Um, I was pretty, um, surprised as far as, um, me, myself having, um, beings, you occupying. have them, they're tied to the energies. Um, this is one of the things uh, Matt Kahn talked about it once. And I, I, I agree with it, that it has to do with shared aspects because we're all, you can say aspects of, you know, we all sh are shared aspects of, of the divine. But what it has to do typically is aspects of us and, and, and a lot of times energetic baggage that's of a certain frequency that has to do with the things that we did at that time. And this definitely applies to you. And this stuff is clearing, not, it, it just needs to happen in its own pace. Mm -hmm. And those beings are associated with that. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. And, and just, I, you've got yeah, some stuff, coming, you've got some stuff coming through for you right that. now. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And they just say, and I want to talk to that a little bit more just generally. So when beings show up and, um, anywhere, whether it's light beings or ones that we, we think of as being more negative or, or heavier frequency, um, that has to do sometimes with the energies of the baggage that's the emotional baggage and energies that are beginning to be active and are, they're coming up and they're being ready to be released. Sometimes they just get released and they're gone and they don't ever get processed at all. Again, sometimes they get processed through our being and we experience them as they're, as they're being jettisoned, which is happening a lot right now because of the accelerated energies. Uh, and sometimes we hold on to them. 
some of these are, are, are those that you're experiencing, those beings are associated with the ones that are coming up active and it's, uh, it has to do with the energies and the activities with which they were associated at the time, long ago, these beings. And it's what they do is these beings um, can ex vicariously experience things through that, con that, the energy, that shared energy connection with it. And once we're aware of it, we can cut it. It's not an acker cord, it's an energy cord. And you can just intend to cut it. Um, but they all, it, all of it will go away um, once it's released. And these beings, once you, you are aware of in your connection with the light, they can't, they, they only have the power we give them. So, and I'm just generally speaking. So that's one of the reasons they show up. And the same is true again with light beings. When, uh, Whenever a being shows up, I, you can say a biblical one, Elijah shows up, or Jesus, or they're, they're not there um, so they can hang out it for, you know, just to be in the party. They're there for us. Whenever a being shows up, they are there in some capacity to facilitate our growth, to help us in the moment. In some way, they are there for us. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, okay. um, I, I just, not, not to belabor the point, but your high self really wants you to just know that's what's happening. Um, and I, I'm going to just say it this way. Don't listen to them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and there's more stuff right. coming through for you. I think you're going to have some awarenesses in the next few days. Okay, good. All righty. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, she yes, wants you to know I, that. You're welcome. Okay. All right. And I am complete. All right. Sharing right now. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate your sharing because when any one of us brings things up, oftentimes it's not only for us, but at some point, some, you know, down the road, someone else has that same thing. It's like, oh yeah, Christine talked about that or Greg talked about that or Pat talked about mm -hmm. that. Wow. I'm so glad they did. Mm -hmm. Does yes. anyone else? Thank have you. Anything? You're welcome. Anyone else have anything more to share or ask questions? All is silent about the decks. Navy turn. I don't have another question, but I just want to say thank you so much for taking time and doing this because it really, all, everyone's questions resonate in a certain way with mm -hmm. each of us. And, and I know we all appreciate it. So thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to continue doing these. And if and as more people get on board, we'll have to figure out how to handle handle that when the time comes. But um, I'm, I'm just, it's a real honor to do it and to, to share with you because as you're, you know, bring things up, it, it's so wonderful to be, you know, to be able to talk about this and, and, and for all of us and to hear things from you and that we share and we all benefit. We all grow from what each of us has to share. So it's a wonderful thing. And with that, I guess I'm going to say, I'm wishing everyone blessings and light. And until next time, we can do one again. Um, you don't have to let me know now. I can do, I, this one was three weeks later. We can do these once a month, maybe twice a month. I don't see them any more than twice a month, every three weeks, you know, whatever periodicity makes sense for, for all of us. Let me know what your, your preferences are and, we can schedule them on a regular basis. And if other people want to join us, they're, they're certainly welcome to do so. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Namaste. Okay. Go ahead. I just wanted to say it's a delight to see everybody on here. And thank you. Yeah, it was great. And thank you, Greg. Thank you, Jeff. So and, and thank you, Greg. There was a, a few things you said that really resonated with me. So um, I'm glad you shared tonight. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, blessings to everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Blessings. Everybody. Love you. John says love you. <laughs> <laughs> love you, John. Okay. I'm hitting end. End meeting.